All right, so we have a Fender, it's a DG200 SCE NAT. So uh, we're doing a basic setup on this. Definitely, I'm gonna show you the restring. Not sure how much of the setup that I can walk you through, but uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Cool. So I should tell you about what I'm doing. I don't know how good this audio is gonna be. Uh, guitar plays all right, doesn't play great. Looks like it's been kept pretty well, but you know, it's got a few years on it and action's a little high. I say a little high, but it's a little higher than Martin Factory spec. So some of you may think it's pretty doggone high. Definitely not what finger pickers prefer. So let's see. Acoustic guitars don't have a lot of adjustments. So neck adjustment's a good place to start. Looks to me like at some point somebody back this is a double two action or double jet or what do you call it? Double action truss rod. And it appears to me that in the past someone has backed it off and actually used the truss rod to put the bow into the neck as opposed to using the truss rod to take the bow out of the neck. So let's start with the neck just Super flat and see how good that does. It might be a little too flat, but it definitely changed the action. You might be surprised how much difference you can get just making sure that the truss rod is straight. A lot of guitars come through for setups that just need a neck adjustment. Okay, so I might have gone a little too far with that. It's almost a neutral position on the truss rod. I may want to shave a hair off of the saddle. It made the action at the nut look a lot closer to what I would think. This guitar still all in frame, looks like it might be. So, restringing these guitars is actually pretty simple. Start by just getting all of the tension off all six of the strings. Guys kept it pretty clean, but there's some dust under where these strings were. You can take all six of the strings off when you're first starting up 
taken or on your restring as the first part of your restring. So it makes the guitar easy to clean good. Give it a real OCD detailing if you want. Don't know what kind of strings these are I'm taking off. Based on what I talked to the guy, eh, they could be what Fender put on there. I don't know. I don't have any evidence either direction on that. Start with oiling down the fingerboard so that has a chance to soak in while you're cleaning up the paint. Lemon oil, valve oil from brass instruments, kind of some kind of lemon oil substitute. Rosewood needs a little oil, not a lot of oil, but a little bit of oil. So just apply a nice thin but generous coat. Make sure it's all slick and shiny. Every little tiny bit of wood has some kind of oil exposure. How fast it soaks in will tell you how much more it wants, if it wants more. It is a pickup in this guy. This is go back with the little compensation. The short string is the B string. Yeah, his fingerboard is clean. Maybe a little dry, but there's not what, a gunk on it. Hardly any gunk on it. This guy takes really good care of his gear. until somebody who's way overqualified can restring your instrument. Back when I was growing up, 70s and 80s, this is totally something that the guitar player does to his own guitars. You really want to leave your guitar out of your sight for a while, hand it to some guy to put strings on it. Now this guy, his guitar doesn't play that great, so he's not just paying me to string it. But new strings is part of the service that we're doing here, because I want to make it play right with the kind of strings he's going to instead of making it play right with whatever is already on it and halfway dead. It had light gauge strings on it, so I got him some more light gauge strings. The old strings were 80-20 bronze, so the new strings are 80-20 bronze. He could have requested phosphor if he would have preferred, but it seemed like he was cool with just whatever matched. So, since I, even after taking them off, I can't tell what brand they are, we'll just go with... Uh, decent brand. Same size, same material composition. Okay, so all six strings are off. Fingerboard is not really soaking up much of that oil. There's still a bunch of it on the top. So, it's not that dry, it's just kind of a lighter colored type of rosewood. So you put all the 
those strings back in. So what's going on here is you take the little ball, you put it down in the hole, the appropriate hole for the string, you line up the little slot, all these things have a little slot down them, line it up so the string can move freely. Hold the button down or the pin and pull up on the string, creates a little interference fit in there, makes the pin hard to get out and locks the string in place. Okay, so let's wipe the rest of this oil that's not soaking in off of there. Yeah, no dirt on this at all. Very good. Play your guitar with clean hands, wipe down the strings when you're done playing your guitar. Won't have any dirt on its fingerboard either. Make your strings seem like they last forever too. Okay, so you need, well, I, my rule of thumb is about three finger widths past the tuner that you're going to. Sometimes on these big fat strings, that's a little more than what's actually necessary. We can always shorten it up and cut a little more off if we need to here in a second. Wind it so all the lines go down the post. Three lines to five lines, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. I want to pull the wind off of here. We're headed to four lines, and that's about all his uh, tuning post will accommodate. Super close without hurting the other strings. tools I haven't brought up to the shop yet include, I didn't bring a tuner up here. I'm going to have to tune this using an app on my phone or something, I guess. I don't know that that's my favorite way to do it, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Take the part you're going to cut off, 
come around the post backwards, go underneath the part you're going to keep, and then hold it tight to the post, move the little part of the string back to the front of the hole, and just tie the knot by picking it up and setting it back down. The first one I did at full speed, the second one I slowed down so I could explain it what's going on. Keep watching more videos and there will be better pictures of this coming up. This is not the only camera that I have access to, but it's the only camera I have set up at the moment. I don't really know much about editing videos either, so... But, I'm gonna learn. Can't be that hard. Six. We're almost done stringing. Were you timing me? I wasn't timing me tonight. We'll do some videos for time. But you got a little rewind button. You can go back and see how long this took. Most of the time it's just winding the string. Winding the strings probably took longer than the polish of the surface. Okay, bring her up to pitch real quick. See if I was overshooting the note. I'm pretty sure I would. Oh crap. Guess I put the old one back on just for the purposes of doing this. Now I go buy a single early in the morning. Don't guess I have a lot of choice, huh? the same size and these seem to be okay I didn't find anything wrong with them he just said they were old I tend to believe him but I don't have a lot of evidence for it they're not really oxidized so which one busted this little guy here guess I need to learn some video editing huh <laughs> Yeah, or maybe this is my chance to explain. Doesn't matter how many times you've done this. Doesn't matter how get good you get at it. Uh, yeah. Stuff happens. Might not be a bad idea to buy packs of strings in threes. One to go on the guitar. One for just in case. I wanted to keep in the bag for, you know, just in case, just in case. Strings break at the show, too. Watch a few of these videos, you'll feel like you're capable of restringing your guitar at the show. Got a cool idea for a video about restringing them at the show. But I'm going to learn how to run a video camera a little bit first. 
a little tease for you. stretch that you probably didn't go quite as far out of tune. Okay, now this adjustment here, this is not for the faint of heart. I'm afraid it's the honest truth that you will screw up this adjustment a bunch of times before you start consistently doing it right. Um, but it's pretty easy as far as explaining it goes, but it's kind of difficult as far as execution. You want the strings to be nice and low, where they come across, you know, so that the slot from the nut leaves the string nice and low and in a good playable position. And these are not terrible. I don't think his intonation is suffering because they're so high. But his guitar can play better in the first position. 
and uh, digging these screws just a little deeper. That's how. Start just by making sure that the angle is right. The way the string breaks across the edge of this, or the break angle across the edge, the break angle of the string across the edge of this is right. taking too much, just taking off enough. It's really easy to go too far, and if you go too far, oh, that's a can of worms. You need to replace the nut or shim it up, or yeah, there's a trick or two about how to fill it in, but I'm not gonna go there. Well, I may go there one day if a customer is on a tight budget, and we need to do that in order to accomplish his goal. middle two are pretty good. It's really the edges, the four on the edges that are not so great. Let's see what have we got here is probably 24 ish. 24 dead on. Careful careful. So on these two, basically just confirming that the angle is good. And then we'll dig these in a little deeper. No, just change the angle. This is something that it's a lot easier to overdo on a beginner's guitar. Something that the experienced player may want really low, but may cause the beginner some problems. So, kind of got to size up how you want your guitar to be and then adjust it like that. I kind of got a feel for this guy and how he plays, but I don't know, man. If you're not, if you don't play a lot, you can be embarrassed playing in front of somebody you don't know really well. And uh, I think he's probably a better player than what I saw. He's just a little nervous. Like I put him on the spot. I didn't mean to put him on the spot. I wasn't trying to put him on the spot. I wasn't going to be judging the way he plays. Measuring the way he plays.
do have a belt sander set up in the other room. I am going to shave just a tiny hair off of this guy's saddle. So I guess we're not done with this thing. Oh, but I'm going to have a capo with me. He may have a capo in the case, but I don't really want to go digging through his stuff. Really, I just want to take this lower by about the thickness of the markings on my ruler. Do you believe this fender's got real bone, nut, and bridge saddle? That strikes me as probably real bone. Okay, I'll be right back. Put the D string and the G string in backwards. No wonder that D string didn't want to go to G. Oh well. So I don't need a 24, I need a 32. Yep, 32.
Yeah, your first restring probably won't be this quick. But your 200th restring should be pretty close. If you keep playing that long. You should, though. It's fun. Okay, tune again. Sander did start my ears ringing. Wear ear protection when you're operating electric or er, power tools. You only get one set of ears. Take care of them. Just because there's no amp and you know the guitar can't mess up your ears doesn't mean your ears can't get messed up working on it. Apparently. That's just how power tools are. This little trick about tying your dead strings into a knot is just so that then they don't have a hard time getting into the trash can. They don't try to climb their way back out of the trash can. shaved at the width of one of these lines on my ruler. Not the space between two lines, the width of one of the lines. It's not a game of inches, it's a game of thousands. So uh, all that's left is to finish polishing the guitar, get my fingerprints off it, and then, of course, tomorrow I have to go buy another pack of strings and replace the broken one. Basically, I have just recorded the entire 
how to set up a Martin, or a Martin. <laughs> That'd be sweet, huh? It's the same process on a Martin, but I have recorded how to set up a Fender FA200. You didn't get to follow me to the belt sander, but other than that, you watched the whole process. How long did it take? Clearly, we're under an hour. Keep watching videos. I'm going to get better 